Hi, guys. Congratulations on this beautiful and poignant film. I absolutely loved it. And thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Thanks for um, uh, so Zoya becomes revitalized when she meets Paula and through their collaboration, a magical and intimate connection is made. We see throughout the film how disparaging it can be when our work is dismissed or invalidated. And through this collaboration, both of them are able to kind of gift each other with that validation. That's so important. When you are both approaching this unique and special bond, did you draw from real life experiences of collaborating creatively and making art from this place of respect and trust uh, first and foremost? Whoever would like to go first. <laughs> well, I know I knew I respected her already before I met her. Because I'd seen her, <laughs> loved her. And um, I think that it's just, you never know if it's mm -hmm. gonna be a great thing or not, you know? And I'm I'm happy with good, but this was an amazing thing to get to have, you know, a working relationship with somebody that I missed, you know, when she was gone and that like, I was amazed by all the time. And also she is such, she's a writer also. So she has, at times she can like um, enlist a very, a really, organized sense like a logician like an organized sense of creativity so she's creative but she's also like able to so i just thought i don't know like literally i could just why don't i just talk about io for a while and oh like, god i'll go home but um yeah it was just i don't i don't want to use the word lucky because i don't know if i believe it but um it was great it was just awesome that it worked out this kind of um, connection was was really lucky. Yeah, it was. Uh, you could really see that through the screen. It felt so their relationship was felt so grounded in a in a truth, and it reminded me so much of kind of that importance of respect and trust in any kind of collaboration. Um, and it was really beautiful to see. Io, would you like to add anything to that? I, I'm like, I don't know. I think you really said it very beautifully, Ray Louise, and you as well, Meg. Um, yeah, you never know, I think, how life is going to, like, reflect the work and, and like, what's going to pop out also. Because something always appears. <laughs> you never know what it's going to be. And I do feel very grateful that I, I think one of the – big things for me was learning from Mary Louise and, and just, and, and getting to know her and like, you know, as a, as a scene partner and an actor, but also like as a person just getting to like spend time with you and all, and yeah, I'd be like charmed by you and, and miss you. And then also like, like, kind of like Paula, like I've like discovered new things with you like every day and then yeah. every moment in that way so yeah that's my little addition I love it it was beautiful um the film explores how grief is non-linear um and how healing it can be and important when we find someone who we can feel vulnerable and safe enough to share our grief mm. um Ayo, can you talk about how Paula's relationship to her trauma and this kind of deep-seated pain that she's carrying with her kind of informed your approach to playing her? I mean, we well, Bernardo and I had a few conversations about it because I, I think Paula, like, carries it and I think, like, keeps quite a tight lid on it and, like whatever's holding down the lid, I think is like, is like, it, it's a mix of, it's a mix of shame and acceptance. I think that's also like, what's so hard about it for her is that it's like, she, she, like, she, it is like a fact, like, it is like something that's like, that's happened. But when that, that sliver of a chance appears, like when that, what if that I think we can so often think about 
so many different moments in our lives becomes true that like that really like becomes her drive and um it was it was like a interesting challenge I feel like those are the two most boring words I could have picked but um like knowing that like this relationship is building with Zoya throughout time and throughout these moments, but also it is new at the same time. But like, while what's really driving her is like this, this wound um, was also very like hard when we would have emotional scenes too, because it's like, it's different for Zoya and Zoya's timeline, like this bond that she's building with Paula and this thing that feels like very instant and very kinetic, but, but like, and is, but also isn't. Um, yeah. It's like, it's like the, it's a lot of juxtaposition, I think, but that's also like what makes things fun. I think as like, I don't know, getting to work in, in gray spaces and in yeah. this big clean cut stuff. I don't know. My Absolutely. No, that's so true. No, that's so true. Um, and another big takeaway for me, this film has so many beautiful takeaways, but was the societal scrutinization of women's choices specifically and like how societal standards can become so loud that it's it's hard to kind of, dif you know, it's difficult to hear our own voice through it out, throughout, throughout it all. Um, we see Zoya's love for both her work and her family and the emotional weight of like her past and present decisions of when and where to spend her time. Mary Louise, um, in your opinion, how important was it for Zoya's choices not to be judged, but rather show her kind of internal judgment and then this kind of path to self-love and acceptance in a way? Yeah, thank you for that question. I think I love a lot that it was written by a young man, you know, who really felt like what if her choice was to be a mother and deep down she felt like she she felt there was something wrong with her that she didn't pursue something else outside of her her the domestic outside of her life and her family you know mm -hmm. what if how is that not enough if that's her choice you know which is as you said like you start to listen to everybody else's um opinion of your life um, and it can eclipse your own sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and I, th I think, you know, I, I was working with somebody once who said, who said to somebody else, like, what do I need to know about her? And she was like, her kids come first. And that was like, I'm so glad that you saw that in me because it's a hundred percent true. It's like, I never thought anything would come before my work ever. Um, no relationship, nothing, you know, my parents, obviously, like my family, not obviously, luckily. Um, but my work was always, and then my kids, it's like, there's no question. And you, I do see people, there were times, you know, I would turn some, I would not be able to do something because of uh, something with my kids. And I always felt like that was a privilege that I loved my kids enough to, you know, it's hard, you know, but, um, but as you said, we are, I don't think men have to think like that. They don't have to think like, Oh, should I, should I like, I'm not going to say it. Cause then I'm but it's like the world will move like, for them, mean. but the it is, it's like the world will move for them. And it's instead, yeah. it's like, as women, I feel like you're, you're always even I, I'm childless, but it's like, I've been in relationships with men um uh, where you're like oh i have to adjust and shift what i want or how i express it or how i move be in order to like to massage your ego or not upset the flow of things and mm. I, and like i love that both like Zoya and Paul are are so like driven and that I feel like in the process of like you know we we would we could talk to Bernardo and like and express our feelings and the things where we would be like no you know we 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 need more or 
or actually less, like whatever it is, like it's enough. Like, yeah, which we're very fortunate. I'm fortunate that also like getting to, um, because I think, you know, as, as like a, a younger black woman, especially in this business, you know, and I'm like, there's opportunities that have happened for me now that I, like, it would have been possible five, 10 years ago. Like, but the timing has, has just afforded me, you know, this and there's, and it's not even, there's, there's still things, ways to go, but like getting to see how Mary Louise like would advocate both for herself and for me was something very, very special and heartening to me. Um, because also it's like, oh, that's, that's like my job too now. Like I get to do that for people who, who are, who are going to, come after me or whatever that is i don't like it usually when like a woman a man can ask for the same thing in this business and it's like mm. they're not seen as demanding or pushy mm -hmm. or something, right. mm -hmm. whatever and actually a friend of mine who's an, a man which thankfully who said what drives him crazy he is a father is that a, a father in our business can just do the bare minimum. And everybody's like, what a great father. Oh yeah. He I, just shows up at a birthday party or picks somebody up from school. It's like, what a great father. And it's like, no, it, it's actually the, 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 um, the measure of that is, is actually just physically being there all the time. Like, yes. just like whether you're falling down asleep or, or yes. screaming or whatever, it's, it's actually being present and doing it. Um, mm -hmm it's it's not it's not the same it's not seen the same way it's just expected yeah yeah well, totally well uh that's my time I could talk to y'all forever and ever and ever this was such a delight oh, thank you same. so much for your time yeah, thank you for your questions it was my pleasure thank you much love mm -hmm.